Jay, Zach, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Yeah, oh, thanks for having us. Great. Yeah, we're lo- really looking forward to it. So I want to, I wanna, before we get into talking about I'm excited to talk to you guys about your latest release, The Three Story Method. I want to go back to something that you guys have been focusing on for a long time, particularly uh, I do listen to, uh, avidly listen to your weekly podcast, Career Author Podcast. And, and the last uh, few episodes leading up to one, the most recent one uh, where, well, as of the recording of this, where you talked about Three Story Method, is you went into a whole bunch of different methodologies of craft. Could you guys give me a, a bit of a background on, 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 on what that whole transition uh, element was? Yeah. Should I take this one? Yeah, Zach? go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was just kind of an offhand thought, believe it or not. It wasn't something we had been working on for months, but uh, we had the launch of Three Story Method on the horizon. And, and Zach and I were talking about different ways that we could uh, sort of start to generate buzz on that. And in writing Three Story Method, it's, I mean, it's, it's based on all these foundational methodologies that we all know and love. And I, and, uh, I kind of had this thought like, I, but how many people really understand them or even know about them? Like we all hear hero's journey, but do you know what it, do you know what it means? Like, do you know what it does? And, uh, and, and then you have ones like Virgin's promise. A lot of people have never even heard of it. And, and so because these were featured so prominently in three story method, we thought, well, why don't we take a few episodes? We'll call it like a special limited series. We'll take a break from our normal podcast format and we'll focus on one methodology per episode and we'll build up to three story methods so that we are, we're going to give people all of the foundational methodologies that influenced us and we've used and we'll prepare them for, for that, for the uh, three story method by exposing them to these, these different types. And it's hard because, you know, you're only doing it in 30 or 40 minutes. So, you know, you can't exactly do the hero's journey justice in 40 minutes, but we wanted to at least give uh, writers some resources and some ideas of, of things that they could chase if they found it interesting. Well, what I found fascinating was there was always homework. It's like, Oh, now I've got to go read Aristotle or <laughs> now I've got to, now, <laughs> now I've got to go. But, but I like that is you're doing a reader's digest version for those who just want the, the quick, but then those who want to dig into it, you're giving them opportunity to go and check it out in detail. Now, and don't feel rushed because we've been reading all these books for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it Especially all at once. Jay, right? Cause Jay did a lot of research and he'd hit me up like every day in Slack, like, you gotta go read this book. You read this book. You know, I was like, dude, you overwhelmed me. <laughs> but it's a lot of good stuff, though. So yeah. Uh, so the genesis of this book it took it, it was quite a while in the making. Can you guys go back to the origin of actually how you determined that you wanted to do this book, and and did it change? Did it change formatting as you were developing it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we we're very systematic people. Like we we like having systems for things. Um, and, you know, having processes and stuff, it's just the way our brains work and stuff. So we had, we'd been developing three story method in this process over, you know, publishing over a dozen books together and co-writing. And even like, even before that and during when we're working on stuff by ourselves and our process is constantly evolving, but what we realized is we had a process that really works and we would go to our event, you know, we do these small world building events and work with other authors and stuff. And, you know, Jay does a lot of coaching work in one-on-one and we would, we would introduce our process and we were realizing people were really getting a lot of benefit out of it. And they were really being like, wow, this is really simple to understand. It's awesome. And so we were sitting in a hotel room in new Orleans and I looked at Jay, I was like, dude, why don't we like write a book about this and like put our process down and, you know, uh, have our own methodology because it's really, really working for people who are coming to these events. Like people are really finding value in it. And from there, it was, it really snowballed. And uh, Jay specifically, you know, Jay, Jay really took the lead on this project and Jay worked in education for decades. And, uh, you know, so it, it really was a really good fit for him. And uh, he really started going down the rabbit hole and he was like, okay, well, I know what our process is, but why are we doing this? Like, what is the origin of all these things we were doing? And really did a lot of the research and, and, and put this whole thing together using his teaching background and stuff. And um, we really feel like that we have put it together in a way that's very digestible. The biggest thing we hear is it's simple. There's a simple process to get your book from idea to draft. And, uh, and a lot of that goes into it. Just, you know, this book took, has taken us a year and a half and it's, which is longer than it takes. I mean, you know, and especially in the indie world, that is a lifetime, you know, but, uh, but we wanted this to be as, as best as it could. Um, 
and uh, and it's really and and it's worked. And this is you know now we have our process out there. It's helped us with our process. You know, even going through this, we've iterated, um, and we will continue to do that. But uh, yeah, that that's kind of the gist of it. So the uh, three story method um, uh, is that um, meant to be a play on words? I was like, do you have to write three stories or is it more related to the building? Because you talked about foundation, et cetera. Can you give us a, a high level overview of what this three story method is? Jay, you want, you want, well, no, you came up with the title. I think. You uh, yeah, but I, maybe I'll let you talk. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the title, but then you can maybe talk about the power three a little bit. Um, the, but basically like every, a lot of stuff in three, most everything in three story methods is based around three and uh, you know, three is a magic number. You know, three is very, very powerful. And um, as far as the title goes, you know, Jay came to me and I'm kind of the guy in our company that does a lot of the metadata and I do our cover. I don't do our covers, but I get them done. And I come up with our titles and stuff. And he's like, all right, you have to, we need to have something with three in the title. Like it needs to be, you know, try or three or whatever. And the word story. And I'm like, those are some pretty strict constrictions. <laughs> and um I just started thinking about it and it was like, well, three story method makes sense because like one of the big concepts in our book is the three C's, which is every, every level of your story should have a conflict, a choice and a consequence. So you have that on a scene level. So within a scene, you're kind of telling three stories. Um, you're telling three stories, but it's also kind of like three levels, like three stories like you'd have in a house or whatever. Um, on a act level, you're telling three stories because you have those things globally in there. And then on a story level, each act kind of acts as its own story that should obviously leave loops open, but you're also kind of tying things off and moving through your story. So that's basically what three story method means um, and, and, and how we came to that title. And uh, again, like the, the three is just a number that comes up a lot. So. Okay. And uh, one of the things I love uh, about this is it's, it's complete. Uh, you're selling the book to help writers. You're not trying to sell other uh, products. Now you have a workbook that is downloadable or you can buy, it's probably cheaper to, to buy the, the print version online. Uh, how does the workbook work with writers? Is that, is, is it, is it actually meant like, you know, cause before I, I haven't started reading it yet. So before I start reading it, maybe I, it makes sense for me to have a project in mind and go, pick up the workbook? Is that what you would recommend for writers? Yeah. You know, the idea with the workbook was, uh, again, sort of another, I, I think for me specifically, like being in education for so long, I just naturally thought like, well, you have a textbook, so you need a workbook. Like that's just, okay. <laughs> that's just how it's done, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I ran it past Zach and we had it professionally designed because we wanted it to be top notch. And the idea was like, when, when, when you get this book, that should be all you need. Like you said, we're not upselling to a course, an online course. We're not upselling. We're not doing a webinar series. We're not um, scaling this. Like the idea was you can read this book and that's all you need. Now, the workbook, uh, there's a link in, in the book where you can download and print out the workbook. It's exactly like the workbook we published. But if you were to take it to like Office Depot or Kinko's FedEx to print it out, it would cost you more than the $4.99 that we're selling it for on Amazon. <laughs> Okay. So we wanted to make a workbook that wasn't precious. We wanted okay. it to be so that people said, okay, for five bucks, I can put all of my planning in one bound thing and, and keep it all in one place. And when I'm ready to draft, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out the workbook and I'm ready to go. And every time I start a new project, I'll just get an, a, a new workbook. And so, like I said, we just didn't want to make it precious. You know, you can, it's, it's eight and a half by 11. It's white paper. It's lined. You can write in it, tear it up, rip it around. Um, and, and that was the whole idea is just give, give you the tools available for free. If you want the convenience and have the, have the nice bound workbook shipped to you for five bucks, then, um, then you can do that too. That's very cool. So uh, I guess what I'm thinking about is in terms of str strategies for authors. So Camp Nano uh, Rimos uh, starts in April, right? Where it's like this mini Nano Rimo, or you know National Novel Writing Month in November. And again, I'm trying to give authors an opportunity lead time because this is the beginning of March when we're recording this. Is this the kind of book and workbook that if I'm planning on writing something for the month of April, or I'm planning on you know scheduling my writing time? I have an opportunity to use this book to help me develop all of my ideas, whether I'm a plants, a pantser or a plotter, I can still do it. I can still do it, uh, create all of my stuff. And then when I'm finished that, then I'm ready to write. Is that, is that how that's, it's meant to be used? That's exactly how it's meant to be used. One of the, 
high level takeaways that we're trying to stress with people, and this came out of our own experience and, and various different ways, is storytelling doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, as writers, we like to overcomplicate everything. We like to make it more complex than it has to be. And we're basically saying a kindergartner can tell you what a story is. It's a beginning and it's a middle and it's an end. Now, mastering that takes a lifetime and, 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 and it's something we strive for every day. But the concept itself is not complicated. So if you, if you get the workbook or you print out the worksheet or even if you just read the book, whether you uh, discovery write, whether you are a hardcore plotter, you will at least get the, the, the foundations of your story uh, on paper so you can start thinking about it. And then when, it, when time comes to drafting, you're not staring at a blank uh, white screen with a blinking cursor. Okay. Now, something that I think uh, I, 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 from listening to your podcast and paying attention to what you guys are up to is uh, I, I've been an advocate for you're always learning about the business of writing and publishing. But what I admire about you guys is you're doing that, but on top of it, you're always relearning the craft of writing. You're always focusing on how you can get better at the craft. Um, how, how important is that? Uh, I, I think it's a leading question because I think you guys <laughs> feel it's important, but, but I, I don't think we can emphasize that enough. How, how important is that to continue to refine your own ability at the craft of writing? Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's a scary thing to think to ever come to a point where you think you've learned enough. And, uh, you know, we do this as, you know, all three of us, we do this as a profession and we take it very seriously. And you can, you know, a lot of stuff, especially in the indie world, which all three of us are very entrenched in, like a lot of stuff revolves around like, well, how do I do ads? Like, how do I do this? Like, how do I get my book to sell more? How do I get in front of good people? But if you don't have a good book, none of that's going to matter. Like you might be able to sell a lot of really good copies or or you might be able to sell a lot of your books because you have like really good ad copy or whatever, you know, you get a, you get a big ad placement or something like that. You get like a book bub or whatever, but if the book's not good, that's not going to be a lot. Like people aren't going to come back and read you again, which is what we all want to be able to sustain this and do this forever. And that all comes back to craft. And, and again, I think like you, you need to constantly be getting better. You need to be reading fiction books, like reading books on the craft. You know, I, I could tell you like, the last year and a half, like going through this and really diving deep into why we're doing this stuff with three story method and reading all these different books. Like Jay and I are way better writers than we were when we started this. I mean, writing this book was just as beneficial for us as it's going to, as we hope it will be for people who read it. Um, And, and so, yeah, I think you just have to constantly keep learning. I already have Zach rolls his eyes every time I do this. I already have four titles in the hopper for, for the second edition of three story method. (laughs) Like books I found afterwards and I'm like, well, I can't put that in now. But, and, and Zach's like, dude, the book has to be done. You got to finish it. Cause I would, <laughs> I'd find these books and like, Oh, got to, got to get that in there. So now I've got, you know, uh, I'm settling on a second edition, but I'm stacking, you know, so even, you know, with three story method, uh, it's not the end. It's not the definitive method for storytelling or, or craft. And, and even the guys who wrote that are still looking to like, Oh, we can improve it. We can, we're going to learn more as we go along. And I think, that's just a very positive attitude you can have, whether you're a writer or a carpenter or, or whatever. Okay, excellent, excellent. I, I want to come back to, because I love the fact that you're constantly learning and constantly sharing the things that you're learning, because thanks to you guys, my reading list has exploded. Like all of these <laughs> things. Now I got to read this, now I got to do that. So I, I, I both hate you and love you for that. <laughs> but how has, so uh, your podcast started, I think the same week mine did, uh, the first week of January, 2008, yes. right? So we're, yep. we're kind of like, you know, <laughs> cousins we're like or podcast something. podcast twins or something. <laughs> twins, yeah, whatever you call it, yeah. <laughs> how how has, uh, because you, you've evolved and modified the podcast and changed the format a couple times along the way, how has the podcast actually helped you in your own writing craft? Hmm. You want to take that one, Jay? Start there? I don't, yeah, it's an interesting question. I don't know if it helped so much in craft as it has more in relationship building. I think okay. that's where it's it's made a tremendous difference. I mean, Yes, we, we have to bring our A game. If we're, uh, I mean, we're, we're by no means a multimedia, you know, empire, but we, we have thousands of people who listen to us on a weekly basis. And, and so we have to bring our A game and, and, and we have to, to do our best and, and we have to be transparent and we have to share what, what we learn. And I think a byproduct of all of that, and, and I'm sure, you know, given your situation, Mark, you see this as well, 
is that you start to build a community and you start to connect with people in ways that are much more meaningful than, than a, a simple email. And, uh, you know, we go to an event or we host an event and people feel like they already know us because we're in their ear every week, have, have been for years. And, um, and it's fantastic. And we get some of the same people coming to all of our events. And, uh, and we take a lot of pride in that because we know that uh, it's a sacrifice that people make. Um, they, ha they have a lot of options. And so to keep coming back to us is, is a real sense of pride. And we, and we take that very seriously. It's a, it's a great responsibility. So I think for me, the podcasting is really about the relationship building, the, the community, and, and just fostering a sense that like, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, we're not competing with each other. We're competing with Netflix and Hulu and Sony Switch and all the other distractions of, or forms of entertainment that people have that aren't reading. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I, I'll, I'll kind of take another route too. I mean, um, you know, the, the conversations that Jay and I have, I mean, we obviously talk a lot about publishing and we talk a lot about writing and craft and stuff, but do, seeing that and doing the podcast every week does kind of force us to you know, plan out our episodes and stuff. And it has sparked some conversations and made me think about things I haven't thought of, you know, or maybe we have, we wouldn't have talked about otherwise. So, and I could go with craft, like there's definitely craft things we've talked about on the show that for whatever reason in our millions of conversations we've had never came up. And I'm like, and, and I can't think of one specifically, but I know it has come up where I'm like, Oh wow. Like we've never talked about that, but that totally makes sense. And so um, having that conversation every single week and, and sitting down, you know, with two of us talking about this stuff too, does not, not just with craft, but just with everything. Like it does definitely, it definitely benefits me, you know, in a lot of the same ways I'm sure it's benefiting listeners as well. So. Okay. Now, speaking of community, um, one of the things that you guys have been championing uh, is, uh, is that in-person connection and the difference between, yes, it's amazing. Uh, you know, Zach, uh, you and I were chatting before, uh, before the call or the recording started. And I said, feels like, even though I hadn't seen you in person since May last year, yeah. it feels like I've been talking to you every week because you're in yeah, my absolutely. ear, you know, yeah. every Thursday. But, um, and Jay's in my ear a hell of a lot more because he's on like <laughs> 50 different podcasts. But <laughs> I, I think uh, those in-person events you do, and, and the, what I love about it is you're focusing on very uh, tight knit, smaller, intimate groups rather than an explosive everyone in the world is here um i'd like you to talk a little bit about the value of that intimate in-person connection even though we do believe in a digital world uh that value of those in-person events that you guys are, are are taking control and mastering yeah i think for me um you just can't replicate being in a room with other people like whether in any instance and you know especially when you're around people who are other creatives and they're passionate about the same thing you are and you know like you know facebook groups are great slack groups are great but you know especially when you look at you know facebook author groups and stuff you you know you have all these other distractions going on you can easily click away and do this stuff but when you're in a group room with people especially with our world building events we're like working towards a common goal like you're present, you're there in the moment, you're not, there's no other things, distractions going on. And, you know, we get so much out of those, even for us, like, you know, all the, we've learned so much from our attendees and, uh, you know, every single time we do them, it just seems better. And it's just, you just can't replicate doing that stuff online. And what we found even more is that when you're able to do the smaller events, you know, our world building events are usually 10 to 15 people, uh, you know, and, and then our, the career author summit is 120, 125. You really, at, at a group that size, you really get to know everybody. You get speakers, get to answer more questions and talk to more people. It's just more accessible for people to be able to communicate and network and be present. Um, and, and so we've really taken a stand and really love doing these smaller events. So Jay, I can let you add. Something well, here. yeah, I mean, Mark, you were, uh, you were a happy attendee at our, at our rock -a event that we held at the rock and roll hall of fame in Cleveland. Uh, what was your experience in that room? So it was phenomenal because I mean, I've only ever collaborated with one other person at a time rather than a room. Uh, when we were uh, sitting around a table, all facing each other in, in, in a really awesome space, right? The rock and roll hall of fame, which is kind of cool in and of itself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was just, I, I, I had to stop myself from um, stepping back and just watching with amazement all of the, 
all of the things that people were pitching and tossing in. And then, and I had to remind myself, I, I should, I should participate too, just because I was <laughs> like, that was the combination. It was just such an amazing experience to watch and go, wow, look at this going. Like we built something completely out of nothing, right? On the spot, uh, which is kind of a really, really cool experience. And then I still feel connected to those people that were in that room because, you know, we did get a chance to, um, to do that. Now you guys are doing, you're doing uh, obviously the career author summit sold out. It's coming in, in May of uh, 2020, but you're doing a number of other uh, uh, events that are, are geared towards intimate collaboration. Uh, are there still tickets available for some of them? Can you talk about what those are? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, we have vampires of new Orleans. Uh, we're going to be doing a world building weekend in new Orleans over Halloween, which is going to be a blast. Unfortunately, that's sold out. Right. Uh, we do have several events uh, in, in the plans for 2021 that we uh, will be announcing at the, at the Career Author Summit in May. Okay. And one, one sort of thing that we just started talking about um, that's along these lines is, uh, again, we wrote Three Story Method as a standalone book, and that's all you need. Um, but we, uh, and, and Zach and I sat down, and we were talking about, okay, what else are we going to do with this? And we started talking about an online course. Like, we were, we were going to book time in Cincinnati and, and rent cameras and, like, and, and we decided not to do that. And uh, we're doubling down on, on this intimate, in-person, real-life gathering. And so what we're doing is we're, we're, uh, we're putting some feelers out there. In the back of the three-story method, there's a link. And you can click on it and tell us if you would be interested in uh, arriving to a, a, a workshop on, a, on like a Friday night or Saturday morning with, with no, nothing or maybe an idea or a concept or a premise and then working with us and, and a small group of, you know, 12, 15 uh, people, and then leaving Sunday with a plan, a, a three-story method workbook filled out, and you could start drafting on Monday morning. Um, and so we're probably going to pilot that if there's enough interest and, um, and see how that goes. And that would be, again, one of these very small, intimate, real-world uh, weekend events. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Um, uh, so you have to uh, pick up the book and check the link to the, the back of it so you can check it out if you're interested. Um, uh, I am, a, I am going to be offering a really cool opportunity for listeners to win uh, a copy of the book nice. and the workbook. Cool. Yes, because you know, my patrons are awesome. So they're supporting us. They're sponsoring <laughs> that, that giveaway. Um, but I wanted to talk about the fact that you, so you guys are, uh, one of you's in Cleveland, the other one's in Nashville. Uh, you're, you're, you're quite a distance apart from one another. You're connected, uh, like through Slack. You guys are talking probably multiple times a day. You're at least video chatting at least one time for the recording and probably another time for business and maybe another time for creative. I'm guessing three times a week minimum you're talking to each other video. Yeah, wise. give or take. Yeah, something like that. And yet you still take the time to uh, sometimes you meet halfway. Sometimes yeah. one of you goes to hang out at the other person's house. <laughs> spend a few days uh again uh you're you're very digital in your approach why 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 are you investing so much time and energy in in that in person connection when you're already so well connected with one another yeah so it goes back to what i was kind of saying earlier their conversations and things happen when we're sitting down like in a coffee shop and uh, a common place we meet is cincinnati ohio because it's about halfway between nashville and cleveland um, and we'll go and like rent an Airbnb for a couple of days. And the conversations happen when we're sitting in a coffee shop uh, or across from each other, or we're sitting down in the couch in the Airbnb watching episodes of The Office. Like I, stuff happens, that uh, conversations happen that would just won't happen if we're on a Zoom call. And we have like this set amount of time and we're, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just a different, it's just a totally different experience and we've found the value in it. So we talk about, pre, we talk about pretty low level stuff digitally. I mean, obviously stuff will come up that we have to talk about immediately, but any big story meetings or any time we have like a big, we have an idea for an event that we want, that we really need to go in, you know, um, whether it's authors on a train or uh, one of our world building events or the summit, like we have big conversations. We hold those until we can do an in-person meeting, which typically we try to do once a quarter. Um, sometimes we have to meet halfway. We we're doing enough events where a lot of times that suffices where we, uh, we will try to get some time to do stuff. 
Uh, as you said, sometimes I'll go up there. Sometimes he comes down here. It just kind of depends. But we really try to save those big conversations because every time it happens, we say, wow, there's no way we would have come to this conclusion, whether it's a plot line, a story, or like something with an event. We never would have come to that if we were just doing this on Zoom or we were brainstorming on our own and then coming back later and meeting. Like it's just totally different being in the same room and just going back and forth. So let's go back to this three story method because I want to um, impress upon listeners the, the value of the basics of the craft and making sure uh, the fundamentals of the story. Um, I want you guys to share, uh, I'm going to give it a bit of a heads up here. I want you guys to share where people can find out more about it. But prior to that, um, um, is it okay for me to ask if we, if we have a Jay's ways or Zach's hacks that you guys are willing to share <laughs> on the spot? If I put you on the spot right here, because you know, I haven't heard one in several weeks on your podcast. I'm wondering, <laughs> satisfy that here. That's all oh. you, Jay. Put All right. So <laughs> in, in regards to three story method or just a, a way or a hack in general, in general, take time I, yeah, for us I, to come I could up be a little with... bit more open. Yeah. A little bit more open in general. Oh man, that is a tough one. Yeah. yeah uh, I I'd put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I can't keep, I can't come up with that on the spot. It's okay. <laughs> I figured, I figured I should have given you guys a heads up on that, but I was like, Oh, I could just throw it out there and see what happens. <laughs> If you are near a Panera Bread, you can get a monthly oh, subscription go. for eight ninety nine, where you get unlimited coffee and tea. This is actually going to be a hack on an upcoming episode, career author, because I love this. Oh my god! So if you're someone awesome. like me who writes outside the house a lot, and I try to support local coffee shops because there's great ones in Nashville, yeah. but uh, I also live right near a Panera, and they have really good coffee. And so eight ninety nine a month, you can go, and if you're staying at the cafe, you get unlimited refills, uh, really? and yeah. Or you can get like one cup every two hours or something like that. Oh, that's Hot fantastic coffee, for writers. iced coffee, or tea. So there's a hack for you. So if you're there a writer, you yeah, nine <laughs> bucks a month will get you unlimited coffee at Panera. And you oh. can go use their Wi-Fi. I love that. I love that. Appreciate there that. Thank go. you. Thanks for yeah. th throwing one out there on the spot. <laughs> yeah, well done, it's, Zach. It's, <laughs> it's probably twenty two ninety nine a month in Canada. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so where can people find out more about you guys as well as some of the events you do in uh, Three Story Method? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the best place to go would be thecareerauthor.com and you can get to everything from there, the podcast, the events. And if you, uh, you want to get Three Story Method, just go to threestorymethod.com and, and links to, uh, it's, it's there for everywhere. We, we are really proud that we, this is the first big book we launched wide. So it's available in all formats, in all marketplaces, all across the world. And uh, Got it on my Kobo. Got it on your Kobo. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, chat with me virtually. I'm looking forward to seeing you both in person in May in, in Nashville. Likewise. Thanks. Yeah, thank thanks you so lot, much Mark. for having us on, Mark. We definitely appreciate it.